Hey, hey, Ron. Yeah? Why didn't you say it the first time I said a a Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, a a Ron! A.A. Run is here, everyone, joined yet again by the lovely, relatable Reese. How are you today? Aaron, I'm real good. How's your life? Life is uh, going well. It's a Saturday. As everyone knows, I uh, uh, try to get as many videos done in a day as possible. So any day where my first day is at 5.30 is a day where Aaron done messed up in one way, shape, or form. I was trying to take a little bit of an easy today, but not that much of an easy today. But, you know, shit happens. Well, this one will make up for it. This one yes. will make up for all the loss of the video content yes. today. Yes. So not only had I done messed up by taking a little bit too much of an easy today, but the Scientologists keep done messing up again and again and again by posting stuff to the internet that nobody should be posting to the internet. Scientology versus the internet. Scientology loses every single time, um, especially when they've got double agent Reese working the case. I'm still, I'm still in. I'm well, I'm not in guys. I got kicked out. You know, this, most of you know, this, I told you guys on a live last night, but I still am being a spy. It's kind of exciting. I hope this spreads far and wide, Aaron. I hope this really kicks off. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got mean, kicked out yesterday at 4 PM just to update everyone. So it took them about 24 hours from our broadcasting, the, the posts from their, their Facebook group to them kicking you out of the Facebook group. I got to tell you, I thought it would take 24 minutes. I did 20. too. Yeah. Let me ask, are you a little depressed that we're not that important to them? Like I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that they would like light a fire. Now my mom pointed something out today. Maybe they were trying to get me kicked out sooner, but maybe they couldn't get a hold of the person in charge of the group. It's, it's not totally like OSA possible. can just kick me out. I mean, they don't have. Yeah. And also, I think they have to walk some kind of a fine line between trying to keep as many spies out as possible and trying not to accidentally alert everyone to the fact that there's videos being made about all of the posts on the Facebook group. Like, because if the people in the Facebook group were all told that, oh my God, there's videos being made about the posts in this Facebook group, everyone in the Facebook group would go and watch the videos because they would want to see what's being said. And, and they don't want to drive people into the arms of the SPs, but uh, it's one of those tough positions that Scientology is in. They're sort of uh, damned if they do, damned if they don't, uh, which is exactly how I like it. Yeah, yeah, me too. But I do have a question for you because I kind of wondered this. Do you think I got kicked out because OSA alerted somebody or do you think I got kicked out because there was somebody in the group watching under the radar and said, whoa, I mean, we'll never know, right? But I just wondered, like, it could it could, could have gone that way too. It it totally could have gone that way. I feel like if that's the way it went, it would have happened faster. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think it's, it might even be getting to a point where for a Scientologist to start one of these Facebook groups, they need permission from OSA. Um, and you would think, I don't know, I, I got to be honest, I'm having trouble making making a lot of good sense about it, uh, of it. Because if, if that were true, right, then that would mean OSA would have a direct, uh, a direct contact info for the admins of these Facebook groups. And if that were the case, then you would think that you would have been kicked out like 24 seconds. <laughs> right, right. You want to know the most stupid part about this whole thing? Guess who's a part of that Facebook group and knows that I'm in it new? Kathy and Amanda, they're in that group. But they've already blocked you or have they, did they, did they only unfriend you or did they block you as well? They blocked me. Amanda so O'Connor was the see. first person they to block me. They can't see that you're still in the group. That's true. But don't you think they would have with their OT8 powers, don't you think they would have reached out to the mod or whoever in the group and said, make sure she's out? Yes, you would think with those OTA powers they'd be able to do that. But guys, what we're gonna, what you're gonna see in a few minutes here is that the real power that you get from OT8 is being able to postulate um, getting your credit card <laughs> limits increased so that you can put four hundred thousand dollars on credit cards in a week. Look at my new we're, cup. Not today, Thetan. Oh, I love it. And holy it, it looks spirit like, activate. Holy spirit activate. Wow. Somebody did sent someone send, I was going to say, is that on your merch store? Yes. Or did someone send it to you? No, somebody sent it to me. She makes these. Um, wow. 
Angie Deaton sent this to me. It's like, it it's hilarious. It says like directions for use. And it says like, anytime that demonic feeling comes around, simply stand back and spray the demon in the face. Continue until the demon is gone. <laughs> That's a high quality product right there. Isn't that cool? It looks like a can of Lysol. I love it. It does. It is so cool. Wow. Uh, anyway, it made me think of Dan. But um, either that yeah, can was... is really big or your hands are really small. <laughs> I think it's pretty big. <sighs> oh, I love um, it. I just think it's funny, though, guys, that Kathy and Amanda were in that group. You just would think, with all of that awareness and the truth revealed, that they would somehow. <laughs> they would somehow, I mean, aren't they, they're, they're exterior. So God, this dog. With uh, all of that, with all of that, um, lack of amnesia on the whole track and full perceptions and being exterior at will, they should have been able to figure out that you were in that Facebook group much sooner. And they did superpower, which reveals all 56 of your senses. So I do, I am a little bit concerned for them and I think I smell a retread. So they can detect the saline content of their cells, but not the presence of recent of Facebook group. Not the lurking SP in the background. Yeah. Yes. I've always said it's the SPs that have the true OT powers. I, I think we do. I think we do. Well, guys, let's take a look at um, the one and only Daniel Thomas O'Connor. He's lethal with the fax machine, folks. Don't don't get in his way. Um, he can sling a fax machine a good 60 yards dead center bullseye um let's Just see facts. now guys i did a video about this many many months ago before um before me and reese were publicly doing videos together but this deserves a revisit because this is daniel thomas o'connor promoting an ot win and i there's nothing i love more than ot wins and this was the ultimate group to be in guys so i screenshot this from the scientologist group that had 19,000 members. Yeah. There was some real kooky stuff going on in that group. Yes. And this is one of them. And I believe Jojo Zawawi is the one that runs that group. That's not a joke. She that is. is her real name. That is her name. She deleted me and blocked me right at the beginning as well. Yes. So let's see what Daniel Thomas O'Connor had to say. He goes, I have an OT win that just happened. I'm putting $376,000 on credit cards this week to this finish it. This just week. this week, not this year, guys, this week <laughs> <clears throat> to finish Amanda and my new civilization builder for our Kansas City Org that is about to start Ideal Org construction. Now, Reese, I can't remember what new civilization builder is because um, wait, a hundred thousand two hundred and fifty. I think that's two hundred and fifty thousand, isn't it? But it can't be. Or is that a million? He's done two million. So that could be a million. Okay. Because humanitarian is a hundred thousand. Correct. I think new civilization builder is a million. Cause, um, I remember Miscavige giving those awards out at the ideal org opening. Okay. I just can't get over the three seventy six K this week. I was shitting my pants today at the Apple store trying to pick out a monitor. <laughs> I was like, well, guys, I don't think I can do this. I mean, that's how much, that's how much available credit you have when you're applying standard Scientology tech on credit card fraud, fraudulent credit card applications. When, when you're true. applying the tech 100% of the time, you get 100% results. <laughs> okay. So Dan's putting 375K, 376K on credit cards this week to finish Amanda and my new civilization builder for our Kansas City Org that's about to start Ideal Org Construction. I have set a firm goal that all of this is to be at 0% interest for nine months or more. I mean, he must made a very strong postulate because that's that's a tall order. When you apply the tech 100% of the time, it works 60% every time. <laughs> mm. It works 100% of the time, 60% of the time. <clears throat> we need to remember that. We need to remember that one. Uh, okay. So this is on top of the fact, guys, that Dan wants you to know. That last week I got approved for a card at twenty two and a half thousand dollar, I guess, limit. I called into this card just now and asked about a credit limit increase. They said it was declined, and I thought to myself, "That's unacceptable." Now, guys, realize he didn't say it out loud; he thought it to himself. Okay, 
That's unacceptable, Aaron. You crossed Cross the line. I've never been asked that before. Okay. Now, that must have been a tone 40 thought because it had instant ramifications in the physical universe. The mess universe bowed to Dan O'Connor's tone 40 postulate. He said a moment didn't even pass. I said nothing. And the fellow popped up with, oh, wait a second. It now shows as approved for $50,000 at 0% interest for a year. Now, sure, you, know, you said nothing. We all know he threatened him with a fax machine <laughs> within an inch of his life. And the guy was like, okay, it's approved. Just the facts, me, man. Don't hurt me. Please, I'll do whatever you want. Wait, is this just the facts, Dan, Dan O'Connor? You're approved. No, just, we don't want to mess here. Just the facts, Dan. Okay. So, yeah, so he, ma he, he made a tone 40 postulate that the physical universe instantly bent to his will. <laughs> the computer popped up $50,000 limit for 0% for a year. Dan says... <laughs> Several more of those, and I'll be done. <laughs> okay. I love the emojis with it too. Yeah. And um, what a jokester! the The amount of fraud that you have to commit on a credit card application to go from, uh, we're not approving you for a credit card limit increase to, I only need three hundred thousand extra dollars of available credit this week. Um, this might, he, uh, he might as well just turn himself into the authorities right now. Cause he admitted to a crime on the internet in a group yeah. of 19,000 people who are all, and by the way, and guys, Dan O'Connor is not just some random Scientologist. He's one of the most senior Scientologists in, uh, of all the class five staff members in the United States. And this is what he's posting in the group as a good thing. <laughs> yep. Promoting okay. it. So, so Dan revisited his own Facebook post. Uh, and he, uh, like, I don't know, many months or a year later, I don't see the date on this, but I remember doing it last time and it was quite a while after the fact. He goes, I just had this pop up. I wanted you to all know, I no longer have any of this credit card debt. I honored it all. Well, how unusual for a Scientologist. I increased my income as a result. Um, have had an ideal org open in Kansas City throughout the pandemic as a result. And now moving on from that to train 100 auditors. Make yourself expand. Take risks. It works. Take risks, Aaron. That is 100% standard Scientology tech applied 60% of the time. 60% of the time it works yeah. every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that um, I remember screenshotting that and I thought, wow. I mean, that's pretty criminal. To do that. Yes. I mean, to promote it like that. Make yourself expand. Take risks. Put $360,000 on a credit card in one week. Again, I was freaking out at the Apple store over a monitor. Yeah. Um, Which is super close to the org, by the way, here, the Apple mm -hmm. store. And the guy was asking me what I'm going to use it for. And I told him and he goes, well, let me ask, what, what's your channel about? And I was like, oh, I don't really want to get into this. But I did. And he goes, I've, I've lived here my whole life. He said, is there a church here? <laughs> Like that goes to show you. Look at Dan expanding. He didn't even know. Nobody here knows. Like nobody knows there's a church here. Well, if you tell the Apple representatives um, how open Scientologists are to taking on new credit card debt, they'll jump right over there and make a pitch for you know brand new, brand new systems for the whole org. That's you know, right. Maybe get a commission off that. Okay, now guys, this is pretty topical because you'll notice that Dan talks about. Now they have to train a hundred Scientology auditors for Kansas City. Well, Dan O'Connor had some bright ideas on where they were going to find the people to become those hundred auditors, and he figured, why not use children? Like, you know who make the best auditors? Twelve-year-olds. Kids. That's right. Twelve. Twelve-year-old kids. Yeah. Well, remember the six-year-old the other night at Mace Kingsley that was like super lazy. He was a, a lazy bummer on the house. Yeah. And now he's the the night. Uh, foundation exec. Yeah. He was out exchange cram. He wasn't pulling his own weight, total DB. Yeah. Then he had some auditing sessions at Mace Kingsley. Now he's a Scientology exec. Yeah. Okay. That well, Dan O'Connor's got some other kids who are pulling their own weight here. Uh, let's see. It's here it is now guys. I normally just for good measure, I'm going to expand the photo. So we're not looking at a picture of his kid, but 
keep in mind, Dan put this on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Dan goes, my 12 year old Kansas city ideal organization is going to train a hundred class five auditors in our field public who will go out and help the region. She's on student hat lecture for second time through along with four of her classmates from our applied scholastics school. She's tough, persistent, and dedicated to getting the course fully and well. Uh, Mia O'Connor is one of the Kansas City 100. Now, in order to really understand this, uh, I don't want to assume that everybody understands what a Scientology auditor is. In the real world, how would you how would you describe it to a non Scientologist? An auditor, a Scientology auditor. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Scientology, I would just say it was like a counselor. That was the best I could give it because I didn't want to yeah. go into detail. But yeah, it's like a counselor, but um, in real life, it's not. It's someone who's pulling. They, they they do the sec checking. They pull all of your crimes. They ask the really creepy, weird questions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, an analogy to a counselor is the same way that I describe it, because even though an auditing session uh, is not really doesn't doesn't really resemble anything like a counseling session, the way in which it does resemble it is that it's one on one, um, a private a private session, closed room, one on one. And it's a version of a talk therapy, but it's usually more often takes the form of an interrogation. The thing that I think is most important for people to understand is that any auditing session, no matter the intended subject, um, is going to be something that potentially contains adult, not safe for work content. Um, that is true whether you're the one receiving the auditing session or the one giving the auditing session, but particularly if you're the one giving the auditing session. If you have a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 14-year-old child acting in the role of auditor, any single auditing session is 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 a time when something of an adult explicit sexual nature is likely going to be discussed. And that child is expected to conduct that auditing session the exact same way a full-grown adult 30, 40, 50-year-old person would. There's no different rules in Scientology for children and adults. Scientology even has this idea that there's no such thing as a child because uh, there's only a thetan in a small body. A thetan is Scientology's yep. word for the spirit. To being in a small body. And Scientology says we are all 76 trillion years old. We all live lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. If you're a 90-year-old man and you die today, you shoot over to a baby body and you're a brand new baby tomorrow. So a 12-year-old child today is someone who 12 years ago was a full-grown adult. Scientology, there's no protections in place for children. No, and they have to follow the auditor's code just like anybody else. So an auditor is an auditor. They are trained just like any other person. And there is the auditor's code in Scientology, and you are trained and drilled on that very thoroughly. So that's right. No, there's there's no difference. <clears throat> that's right. And so, um, you know, when Dan O'Connor is bragging to the Scientology group of 19,000 people that his 12-year-old daughter and her classmates in the Scientology school that he runs in his basement are all in training to become professional Scientology auditors. That is exactly the path he is setting all of those children down. And uh, I, I'm highlighting this to the world because the world will find it shocking. But the truth is, in Scientology, they think it is highly commendable to put kids on auditor training, the younger, the better, because the younger they are, the more it reinforces the idea that those kids are reincarnated past life Scientologists. So it's almost like a badge of honor as totally. a Scientology parent for your kid to be doing auditor training. Cause you're like, well, my kid came back. My kid's a last lifetime clear, probably last lifetime OT8. 100%. It's, it's a, it's a brag. It is. Yeah. It's a total brag. Like to if it, almost to the point where like I feel like if you have kids that are not on the bridge at twelve, it's kind of frowned upon. Yeah, you're a DB like, crim out of shame. Well, out yeah, or just like they went they went through the what was the station. yeah they went they must have gone through you know we have to start all over with this one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now this post is about his twelve year old daughter, but you will see here he proudly posts photos of all the other kids that attend the Scientology school in the basement of Dan O'Connor's house, yep. who instead of doing actual education are doing the, pre, the, the prerequisites for professional 
Scientology auditor training. Isn't that illegal? I just don't know. I wonder if that's illegal that they're not going to school, that they're doing the student hat instead. Those are all students. I know all those kids. Those are all students that are students at Dan's school. Yeah. And Scientology parents are paying Dan a ridiculous amount of money per month to educate their children. And instead, they're being tutored in his basement by a, a girl who didn't even graduate high school herself. And then when they probably meet the absolute bare minimum requirements of whatever homeschool program they're probably enrolled on, they then get sent into the org for their real education, which is mm -hmm. the Scientology professional courses. Yeah, it's a thousand dollars a month per kid. Unbelievable, really. Yeah, because Huxley was going to go to it. My in-laws, Doug and Brenda, were going to pay for it. They wanted to take him out of public school and put him in that. Wow. And then I guess you did want to explain what this photo was. Oh, because oh, yeah. this photo, yeah, go ahead. Explain why this was important. So those are the, um, is my mouse over it now? I'm trying to zoom in, but. Can everybody see what my mouse is doing or am I the only one? Uh, you're the only one who can see your mouse because my screen is the one being shared. Okay. Um, the girl in the stranger thing sweater. Yep. All the way that's, on the right. That's Asia. That's the girl that they plucked at like the age of 12 or 13 out of her home, out of, I assume school. Um, and she became the nanny and she went and moved into Dan and Amanda's basement and they put her on like full-time training and nannying and she travels with them everywhere. Um, the kid she's got next to her is Dan and Amanda's youngest, Lydia. And then I don't know who the kid is next to Lydia. And then the two kids next to the boy in the red are Dan and Amanda's kids, Mia and Stella. And then that kid next to Stella in the green sweater is um, Michael and Elizabeth Clancy's kid. Elizabeth is uh, going to be the ED with Brenda or was. Uh, she's currently on the training program. Her kid is uh, 12 or 13. She's been on the training program for the last two or three years. Hasn't seen her kid right there. That's her kid, mm. the mother. And then Amanda O'Connor is right there on the other end. That says Christmas. Is this outside the their floor. house? Because I'm just noticing the kids are wearing no shoes. Is this like? Yes. They have a giant house. They have a very big like castle-like house that they bought. Huh. Wow. Okay, so, um, you know, that's Dan O'Connor leading by example. How to enroll your preteen pr children onto Scientology auditor training and how to put $400,000 on credit cards in a week um, through fraudulent credit card applications. That's 100% standard tech working 100% of the time, 60% of the time. Every time. Every yep. single time. Were there any other Dan screenshots? Uh, I'm sure we have hundreds, but these are what well, were no, the ones, the ones that I we had were doing today. Up. Yeah. Okay. Those are the ones I had queued up for today, but we've, we've got a whole, but wait guys, there's more. There's more. Damn it. Um, I, I like how whenever you mute your microphone, we know you're screaming. <laughs> are you screaming at the dog or Jeff? <laughs> The dog. I don't know. I don't know where Jeff is. I don't think Jeff's home. <laughs> Kids, that's enough. Oh my God. Look what the dog just brought in. Come here, Bo. Come here. Look. He actually he just brought that he in. He doesn't tear stuff up, so he just carries it around in his mouth. Yeah, he just brought that into me. Wow. Uh, um, what else do we have? Do we have time? Oh, we have time. We have time. I um so I have three queued up, but I'm worried that these three three i feel like i'm missing one you know what let's pull it up and i'll try to find the other one while we're talking about stuff so let me I'll okay, just open, I, open these i'm gonna um what what well you're looking i was just gonna go through the comments to see oh actually go ahead do that do that do that just to see i saw a couple people i should have started well uh, pull up the super chats okay I love Don in Wyoming. I'm here. I love you both. What's Bama? Bama? Is that Alabama? Oh, okay. Is playing and losing. So y'all just made my day so much better. Love that y'all are doing this beyond informative to us wogs and really quite amusing and sad. I agree. Sorry. I didn't know what Bama is. I don't follow sports, Don, but thank you for that. Let me unstar. 
This is why you're better at this. Uh, oh, you're good at that name, though. Do you want to say it? Lathanda Grauklinger. Thank you. Tell the Apple Store guy Scientology needs Apple Watches. Yes. Seriously, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Cody Mack, forget life repair. Fax repair is the moneymaker. Oh, my God. <laughs> Free Zenu Project. Aaron, FYI, you have someone impersonating you. What? At growing up in Scientology, include the... I, I found that person. It's actually like the fifth account that's popped up. Um, so someone will create an account that looks almost identical to my account, and then they'll post spam in the comments on my community tab. It's just, they just it's like a spam bot that posts like Bitcoin scams and shit. Uh, but they do a really good job looking like it's me, even though you know if you know what spam bots is, it's pretty obvious it's a spam bot. But um, I I blocked those guys earlier, so thank you for that. I got a bunch of emails about that. Okay, um, rural SD lawyer. Every state has laws on school attendance. Most are age 16 or 18. States vary on how homeschooling is monitored, but it is definitely illegal not to educate children. I would think so. I would hope so. Uh, Freezy New Project. Reese, is that your mom voice you use when you're <laughs> mute your mic? Absolutely. You know it is. I have a serious mom voice, guys. John Sosovsky. Oh, no. Captain Keeler went to the dogs. Don't worry, John. He does not. He is like treats his everything's like a little baby and he took it off my desk, but I'll get it back. He doesn't tear anything up. He's super delicate with stuff. Uh, Sarah, no connection to your old nutty religion, but how I'm extra proud. My initials are SP. Totally. Okay, good. I found, I found what I needed. <clears throat> okay. Good timing guys. This is pure gold, especially because this is from Mimi Pollock, Ron and Mimi. Oh geez. Did I not screen share yet? Ron and Mimi Pollock are legendary Scientologists. Um, Ron Pollock was partners with um, the Feshbacks in a hedge fund called Bulldog Capital, where Ron Pollock and the Feshbacks made tons of money, but the investors lost everything. Um, Ron is one of the few Scientologists. Now, he wasn't born and raised in Scientology, but he graduated from Yale Law. Like, there's not that many Yale, Yale, Yale educated lawyers in Scientology, but Ron Pollock is one of them. So, hmm. um, and they have a whole bunch of kids. And this is Mimi. Oh my God, this was really only six days ago. You're kidding. Yeah. All right, guys, get ready for this because this, uh, anyway, we'll let the story speak for itself, but I think this story speaks volumes. Okay, Mimi Pollock says, when we had our three boys, Ron once told me, you know, living in Clearwater, you can expect 50% of our children will end up in the Sea Org. I freaked out a little. God, this is this is already kind of a big deal. First of all, was Ron Pollock complaining about his kids joining the Sea Org? That's a no-no in Scientology. Oh, was yeah. he warning his wife this would happen? And look, she was she freaked out. She's like, no, I don't want my kids to join the Sea Organization. That's right. Now, part of me loves this reaction because that is the natural human reaction to anyone being told that their kids through coercion and you know fraud and manipulation are going to be coerced into signing a billion year contract working full time for a cult without any education without any protections without for for no money uh not not allowed to have children um not allowed to visit the family on holidays like the natural human reaction would be I don't want my beautiful little babies sucked into the sea organization so I kind of love that Mimi responded that way Yeah yeah me too <sighs> uh, guys, we won't make, well, I won't bury the lead here. This whole story ends with her kid joining the Sea Org. Uh, okay. So she goes, no, with three kids, would I end up with one and a half at home, two at home, only one at home. I was motivated to have more children. She wants to have more kids. So she is allowed to keep enough children from the Sea Org. Okay. We had our fourth child, Lila but I still did not like the odds. So after much hesitation and doubt, we had one more four years after the others, Rachel. So I guess Rachel's the youngest. Okay. Recently in her high school years at Delphian, by the way, guys, you've heard us talk about Delphi a lot. That's the Scientology school up in Sheridan, Oregon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or Scientologist run school. Okay. It's a boarding school. It's a boarding school. Uh, it's a very expensive, what, 30,000 a year? for it's high school it's super expensive 
And I guess, no, it's not just the high school. You can actually do like, I think, grade school years. Oh, yeah. You can ship them young. Yeah, yeah. The Catherines. Some of them went to Delphi. Yeah. Recently in her high school years at Delphian, Rachel had started to formulate some really big goals. Those included going to Yale, like her dad, going to Harvard Law School, like her dad. Oh, I see. So Ron Pollock went to Yale for undergrad, but Harvard for law school. There's not a lot of Scientologists who, who do that. No. Um, and down the line, becoming a Supreme Court judge and changing the world. <laughs> How PTS to the middle class, wog thing. thing is, and it's some wog thing. Help the world by becoming a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's out ethics, off purpose, other intention, wog bullshit. <laughs> I had no idea whether she could truly make this happen. Well, tsh, way to support your kid. Um, but, <laughs> but I granted that it was possible and, of course, supported her. Maybe she was only referring to the Supreme Court justice part. That, that's aiming pretty high, so I can understand. You know. Oh, my okay. God. But I told her this. As much as I wanted all her dreams to come true, I was also – um. Oh, hold on. Am I messing this up? Okay. I was also terrified of the college environment she would live in. The morals, the politics. Oh, OMG. I the real world. I hadn't read this whole post. So like literally, instead of going, I would love my uh, daughter to go to Yale like her daddy and Harvard Law like her daddy. She's like, what will, what will she be exposed to in the real Is world? Guys, that is so much proof right there that I told you, I've said this, you don't trust the outside world. You just stay in the Scientology bubble. It's just safer. Look at this. She's not, she's, she's fearful of her daughter going to college. Yeah. Even though her husband went to college. It's a little weird. Okay. But Rachel loves politics and law, and she was certain she could maintain her own point of view. Well, that wasn't entirely reassuring to me because we are very different and opposite in most of our political inclinations to the point where I would have to beg her not to bring up politics in every conversation. It doesn't sound like Mimi's willing to confront and talk about anything. She needs to redo her grades. Isn't she OT? Yeah. I mean, this is an example of Scientology not even working 100% of the time, 60% of the time. I it's mean, totally an example. She's got the truth revealed. Like, why does she even have doubts? Exactly. This I told her multiple times. No, this I told her multiple times. It was the only thing I could find to stay in ARC after conversations where she would make political speeches that infuriated me. Wow. This is kind of Inf infuriated. Do you get a, do you get furious when you're on OT OT8? Do you want to do you want to take any bets as to which one of them is right wing and which one of them is left wing? Because um it's clear they're clearly an op clearly one of them is left yeah. and one of them is right. I'm yeah, willing to guess. bet it's Mimi that's right and the daughter that's left. A hundred percent. Even if I don't agree with the things you promote, I fully admire your passion for the world. Well, that's nice. I mean, that's that's all you'd really expect a parent to care about, right? Okay. When mm -hmm. her siblings complained to me about her ideas, I mean, is is it just me or is Mimi shitting on her daughter in this Facebook post? She's shitting on Rachel completely. Yeah. When her siblings complained to me about her ideas, I kept repeating, yeah, but look at her passion for the world. Isn't that beautiful? Rachel and Ron, her dad, went to South Africa a month ago. Is it, by the way, these are Scientologists who live in Clearwater. It's crazy to me that Clearwater Scientologists are going to Africa to get Scientology auditing. A lot of them are. My dad is. I saw it in the group. He was going and getting services in South Africa. Why? It's cheaper there. <laughs> Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, my God. Because I noticed that being in the Scientology group, so many people were like flooding to South Africa from America yeah. to do services. And I was like, what's going on in South Africa? It's Is that what it is? It's because it's cheaper. And I'm sure the flag registrars are furious that a flag public like Ron and Mimi are taking their daughter to Africa to get auditing. And then you'll see what she's about to say. Rachel joined the Sea Org in Africa. When she could have just joined the Sea Org in Clearwater. Oh, yeah. See, I bet they were pissed about that. Yeah. 
Okay, so Rachel and Ron went to South Africa a month ago. She worked on volunteer projects as a way to fulfill a school requirement and as something to add to her college applications. When they would meet with the LRH Hall, then they would meet with the LRH Hall event there. I have no idea what that means. What? I don't know, but I'm sad about this. What a waste. Yeah. She was going to go to she was going to go to law school. Like she actually had goals and dreams. And you know what happened? They went to do services in Africa and they just did what they do. They just pressured yeah. the shit out of her and sold her on it. That makes me sad. This kid actually had like aspired to do what she was going to do. That's too bad. Yeah. Because we've commented before on how Scientologists don't value higher education. And I'm certainly not someone who thinks you need higher education in order to succeed in life. But Scientologists specifically think it's almost dangerous to get higher education and that you've already totally. had a college education millions and millions of lifetimes after lifetimes. And Scientology is the only thing you've never done before. So why would you waste why would totally. you waste this lifetime doing college again? I'm afraid of college. I was always afraid of anything like that because it was planted at such a young age. It like it's not necessary and it's actually like off. It's like, it's like counterintuitive. Yeah. And they would get you on psych drugs and give you a lobotomy and totally. then PDH you and you'd be an agent for the CIA. And yep. No, I'm serious. That's, yeah. that's a real thing. So that's sad for Rachel. But, and, and, oh, that's right. That's why I was making that point because no, most Scientologists couldn't afford to send their kid to Harvard and Yale. And yet not only can this family afford it, the daughter was actually interested in doing it and they still shut that uh shut that option off to her you'll see what happens here so a week ago rachel signed her CEO contract in africa rachel and ron facetime me with the news and she was beaming i guess having her definitely improved the odds oh that their kids would it sounds like it's their first kid that went to the sea org oh yeah 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 oh my god so they had more kids so that they'd be able to keep some, but the youngest is the one who joined. <laughs> wow. When she was a toddler, oh, this gets really gross. When she was a toddler, Grandma Shirley used to tell me that Rachel was a Sea Org executive. Her aunt oh Gail used to say, this one is a returnee. There you go, guys. There's your crazy for you. There's your dose of crazy. Remember when Huxley was a, an infant and that creepy IAS reg came up and said, hey, man, I recognize him. He was in the Sea Org with us. That's how they talk. Yeah. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it with your own eyes. Yeah. Um, this one is a returnee. Did I? Oh, no. Do I not have the next one in the series? Oh, you do. I sent. I mean, I was careful. No, I mean, do I do I not have it queued up here? Let me uh, try to find the next one in the series and uh, tackle some comments while I'm looking okay. for it. I actually starred one. Um, well, Kate, friend, let's see. Uh, regarding school regulations, you might look up the Coalition for Responsible Human uh, Responsible Homeschool Education. Mostly X. What does that mean? X Dan. What does that mean? Where? Oh, X. Wait, wait. Mostly X. I don't know. X Christian. X Christian fundamentalists. Oh, I got it. Thank you. Uh, but I bet they'd be interested in a crossover. Not sure if on YouTube. Okay. Oh, Thank I you for found, your super chat. I found it. I found Tom it. working. Found it. You found it. Okay. Reality TV show on gold base. Agree. Yeah. I'm working. And then I have one more super chat, but I also starred this from Goosebumps 801. PDH stands for pain, drug, and hypnotizing. Yeah. Pain, drug, hypnosis. Hypnosis. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's one of those things that um, L. Ron Hubbard always implied would happen to you if you went to the dentist. <laughs> that's correct. I'm not. Yeah, that's not. You'd it's be pain, pain drugged, and hypnotized. Yep. From the nitrous. Okay. Let me see if I can share this properly. And then I'll probably have to figure out how to find the next one. But we're just doing it one step at a time. Oh, Lord. Why am I having so much trouble with this? Are there any other comments you can pull up? So I don't. Yeah, I was going to answer this one from Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. I forgot about your, your dead air anxiety. Uh, Wonder Woman, Reese question. What made you uncomfortable when you met David Miscavige, even though you were a diehard believer at the time? I met him twice and uh, I was never, guys, I'm a pretty quick to 
either have my guard up or my guard down around people. Usually it's I'm comfortable. But for some reason, he was one of those people that immediately I was uncomfortable around. Um, but I think that's also because being in the org and under the umbrella, he was never known. He's not the PR version that you guys see on commercials or whatever. He was a, a hard ass. He was never known to be this like really sweet guy. He was always a heads are going to roll kind of a guy like stats, stats, stats. He was he was a hard ass. Are you done, Aaron, or I can do another one? Do another one. I found it, but then I lost it. But yeah, keep just do another one. Okay, Danny Doom. How did Reese manage to get such cool, funny personality within a brainwashing cult? Well, Danny Doom, thank you for the super chat. And that's such a nice thing to say. I don't have an answer for you because I don't think I have a cool personality, but clearly you do. And we appreciate that. John Sostovsky. Oh, no, not the dead air incident. <sighs> yeah, I don't have the dead air. I don't have that. I, I have... Aaron's anxiety when it comes to getting behind in the comments. You guys know that. If, uh, I have to catch, if I have to catch up and I get really behind, I get super anxiety. Did you find it? Yep. Cool. Okay. When Rachel signed in South Africa, she was with some new friends she had made. Sea Org members. Well, that explains why she joined. Exactly. <sighs> some new friends she had made while volunteering that she already considered her first true friends in her lifetime. That's sick. She was a few weeks short of her 18th birthday. Apparently, out of the blue, after she signed her contract, everyone in the room said, Welcome back, sir. Wait, what? That is eval, Aaron. I'm shocked. That's some serious evaluation. Yeah. Now, here's what's uh, uh, even more manipulative than that might seem. There is no way in hell her dad did not tell the recruiters that during uh, Rachel, is it Rachel? Was it Rachel? It was Rachel. That during her, uh, what her grandma used to say about her. Oh, grandma used to say that she was a returning Sea Org executive. So, so the dad tells all the recruiters this and all the her friends this. And then when they get her to go in and sign her contract, they're like, welcome back, sir. By the way, in the Sea Org, women are called sir. That's really, that's really fucked up mm. to me because... Uh, that's a big, I mean, to me, I don't know about you, Aaron, but as a Scientologist, that's a big no, no, that's eval. That's ev Duchess Diana. What is eval evaluation? So it's a big no, no to say where you came from or anything well, like that. to tell someone what to think about their past, their past. Basically, yeah, correct. Is so a huge, huge value. Now they huge do violation. it. They do it all the time, but they do it behind your back. You cannot say it to somebody's face. It's a big violation. So yeah. for them to say, welcome back, that's, that's implying where she came from. Um, that's really sick, by the way. That is so manipulative. That is total manipulation. Yeah. Okay. So on, and, and so Mimi, her mom continues on. Honestly, while I feel all the loss, by the way, that's not a very cool thing to say in a Scientology group. No, it's not. While I feel all the loss, I keep reminding myself that I was going to lose her anyway through college indoctrination. Oh, that's oh my God. Stop dang i so she'd rather lose her child to the sea org than lose her child to a higher education somebody's gonna get in so much trouble for letting me stay in this group for almost 24 hours to screenshot this guys reese has over 200 screenshots from this group you guys are in for a wild ride the next couple of weeks weeks i feel Months. like we'll be doing this year a year <laughs> this is I, gold I, 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 does it not occur to her that her husband, who's one of Scientology's biggest financial contributors, at least before the new generation of big dog donors came along, is one of these so-called lost through – like, it? Why is, why is it okay for her husband to have done it, but it's not okay for her daughter to do it? Which, by the way, is probably how most Scientologists feel about Scientology. Um. <laughs> totally. I just, I just don't understand – I don't know. There's a lot going on here. Again, I'm surprised. I think I'm guessing this Facebook group is going to be shut down in general. I feel like it's going to end up just getting wiped out yeah. because this is such a liability for them. What she yeah. just said should never even be on the internet. Do you agree? Absolutely. It's way too much of a, of a liability situation. Yeah. And even kicking you out of the group, the Miscavige has to know that there's probably potentially hundreds of spies in that group at all times who totally. are just under the radar for right that now. They can't control. Exactly. They can't control. So they're just going to wipe this group out. I guarantee you. I, th I mean, I won't know, 
but I feel like they're just going to say Miscavige, I would think, would just say no more Facebook groups. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're one of the 20, nearly 2,800 people watching live, do us a favor real quick and hit that like button. It's fast. It's easy. It's free. And it really does help the stream. Um, okay. So let's see what else she says here. Uh, and I keep reminding myself, given her passion for the world, she will be in OSA. So she's going to work in the Office of Special Affairs. The Maybe legal, she's on here now. She might be watching our video. Everybody say hi to Rachel. Welcome back, sir. Congrats. Congrats on that billion years, sir. She will maybe she'll be one of the people hiring the private investigators to who harassed Danny Masterson's rape victims. Oh my god, Rachel, we didn't even know you were in here, girl. Wow. Um okay, so she will be in Osa. She will change the world surrounded by friends in a powerful team. She has plans to continue with college online. <laughs> Those plans yeah, are going down the shitter. Right. Oh my God. She's going to have to learn how to shower without soap. Are you kidding? <laughs> She's not going to continue college online. Oh Rachel, get ready God. to eat in three minutes or less girl. Yeah. Yes. She has plans to continue with college online. One, one Sea Org member there has done it. <laughs> <laughs> one. That's awesome. And they're in the hole, right? As we speak, she will graduate high school as a homeschooler. She wants to get her law degree part-time as well. She will stay there now. Oh, so stay in South Africa. She will stay there now to complete her uh, sur uh, survival rundown, which is just objectives, the objectives, uh, the old TRs and objectives re re reinvented. Get auditing and training, then EPF. So EPF is the Sea Org boot camp. Then to the US for a few. Now I got to find the next one. So do some questions so I don't freak okay. out. Okay. I want somebody to undercover go join the Sea Org. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Lori. Hey, Lori. Hey, Aaron. How about grabbing lunch with me and Tampa B Man? How come I'm not invited? Sounds like a plan because you don't live you know, in Clearwater, silly. Yeah. Andrew Gold uh, is coming to Clearwater, he said. He is. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming and he to invited town. me. He was like, I wish that you would come. He was like, I really want to meet you and Aaron. I was like, well, Aaron never invites me. I guess I could. <laughs> Aaron's I never think, once asked me. I don't think he's coming until like March. Yeah, he. that's right. And he was like, could you be there? And I said, yeah, but I mean, I don't okay, know. Okay, I found it. I found it, but um, give me a sec to pull it up. Yeah, I'm going to answer this one anyway. Scarlet Phalanges. <laughs> Question. Wasn't uh, Reese saying Reese was in an ice cube and a diabetic due to the sweet comment eval? Total eval. Telling me that I came from a cube of ice, which is a real thing. My father told me I was dumped here in ice. And then my chiropractor said I have diabetes because when I was born, my father walked into the labor and delivery room and said, hi, sugar. Yes, that's a perfect example of evaluation, girl. Okay, good. Technically, I'm supposed to wrap this video up in three minutes, but even so, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll be a little late, but let's try to wrap this one up. Okay. Um, hide that comment. Oh, yep. Sorry. Okay. So she goes, then she will be off to the US for a few months while waiting for her work visa for South Africa. Guess what, guys? She ain't going back to South Africa. They're going to keep her in LA. They're not, they're not going to let an American Sea Org resource get stolen by South Africa. That's not going to happen. She'll end up at flag or she'll end up in Los Angeles. Uh, she'll end up, you know, washing David Miscavige's underwear or something on the CMO EPF. Just wait. I guarantee Gross. it. Guarantee it. I mean, it's tiny little underwear cause he's a tiny little person, but just a little guy. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll have her for a bit. No, you won't. Cause she's going to be in the sea or you're not going to see her ass. You don't get to see her if she's in the sea or she won't even have a fucking phone. You won't even talk to her. I don't yeah. understand. They're going to keep her at flag. They're not going to send her back to South Africa. She'll do caused resurgence rundown and superpower while she waits for her visa. Sure. She will. Sure. She will. <laughs> no, she won't. She'll be cleaning toilets. She'll be cleaning toilets in the uh, FH with a toothbrush. Yeah, no, she, she will not be doing <sighs> those. While crying quietly on the phone with her, I could only say, I understand. I completely understand. She should not be saying stuff like this in the Scientology group. This is awesome. Of course, I always understood her passion for the world. Here are some pictures and a little video. I think when I saw the video in her first few days there, I knew this was going to happen. I've never seen her so happy. Here's the text she sent me the day after she signed. 
Here is where my thoughts are at. I woke up this morning and immediately went on TikTok for my morning routine. I scrolled through multiple videos of teenagers being in victim mindsets, extreme liberals. Oh, so the mom, okay. So the mom is left wing, the daughter's right wing. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pegged that. I would not have pegged that either. Proposing policies that would destroy the US, extreme Republicans doing the same. Oh, I see. She's shitting on both sides. So she's an enlightened Scientology centrist now. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, considering that I don't have the next screenshot pulled up and okay. Aaron I has to go, guys. my daughter, I would take her somewhere at 615. And I'm I'm guessing the rest of, of this is the kind of stuff I normally wouldn't share on my channel due to my no politics policy. Um, so what's amazing to me, hold on, let me text my daughter and let her know she doesn't need to call me right now because I'm about to, uh, I'm almost ready. <laughs> I'm going to really fast. Will the mom get in trouble for saying she's losing her daughter to the SO? She could yes. potentially, Janet. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Um, South Africa is where they do old school tone 40. They don't use ashtrays. They use lions. There you go. And then Keila says, so this mother just left her child in Africa with no parents, nobody but Scientology. Yeah, that's no, Keela. no. Her dad, her dad, Ron was there with her. Right. But I mean, she's going to be there alone, but she won't end up there. Oh, exactly. Exactly. She would. Yeah, exactly. Ada, thank you for your super chat. I'm glad that you are impressed for us speaking out. I am too. There's one last one here, Aaron. Uh, can you explain what training is for Scientologists and how that can last years? Like they only have so much documentation to use. Who's developing the training materials? Oh, all the training materials are written by L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, guys, L. Ron Hubbard wrote tens of thousands of technical bulletins and policy letters. And those technical bulletins, if you ever look up, if you Google like Scientology technical volumes, you're going to see pictures of these big, fat, fool's cap size, thick um, volumes. Those are all the technical volumes. If you Google uh, Scientology policy volumes, you'll see big, fat, thick, green volumes. Those are the policy volumes. Um, so, and, and then those volumes are repackaged into an almost endless series of course packs. Yes. And people who do Scientology um, training, whether it's the technical training or the administrative training, they never do those courses just once. You can do those courses over and over and over again. Uh, on uh, you could spend 30, 40, 50 years in Scientology and 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 still not have studied everything. It's I mean, and totally. that doesn't even include all the books and the lectures. Well, and, and they re-release shit all the time. Yeah, and I don't mean 30 years full time. I'm just saying you could be in Scientology for 30 years and not have done all the courses. And, and even, even if you did, go on. Yeah, you were yeah. Well, even if you do a training program, you've only finished your training program. That doesn't mean you finished all the training there is to do. So like right. when you have Dan O'Connor talking about making a hundred auditors, well, you can be a class four auditor. You can be a class five auditor. You can be a class six auditor. You can be a class eight auditor. And they're all, you know, like it's, it's endless potentially. Totally. Um, Aaron, real quick, are you going to be available to do one of these tomorrow or do you already have plans so we can tell oh, our audience? I'm absolutely available tomorrow. Okay. So guys, cause there's almost 3000 of you in here. I just wanted to say, we'll plan on something for tomorrow. We have so much content here to expose and, uh, I love it. I hope, I hope these people. Yeah. See the light. Yeah. Sorry. We had to cut a little short guys, but a promise is a promise. And, uh, um, that's what's happening. Stay tuned guys. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing another chat with Jason Horvatic later this evening. Um, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for hanging out with us this evening. Thank you, as always, to everyone who watches until the very end. And we'll talk Bye. to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a different one of my videos, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 